In this video, I'm uh, I'm going to show you what I'm recording with. This is my first one. The one the one that's recording now is the one you're looking from, and you know, it look, they look just alike each other. The difference is is this bottom I screwed up, uh, and um, I think the camera fell over or something happened, and and this got ripped right off. Um. I I can't remember exactly what, what how that happened, but anyhow, the um that that made it so that I couldn't actually I couldn't actually just what it does what that thing does is it permits you to mount it onto a tripod, um and how these things start up and I think this one might still have some power in it. Let me turn that on. No, it's lost all of its power. But the thing is, is how you charge these things is on the side. There is um, a little USB-C connector there. And then here you have a micro SD slide, slot. And if I can get into it, this is the battery. And when you get the Mirage, when you get this, and I can give you the exact ISBN, I mean, what is it, the, um, the serial number, or not the serial number, the um, model number. It's, uh, let's see, which one is it? It's, uh, ZA3A0022US. That's the um that's the one. And the it's the Lenovo VR dash four fifty uh one F, I think is what it is. And uh so I mean you could probably you can't really see this unless I put it like point blank, you might be able to see what's actually there. And um, they don't, they're not, they're no longer making these. Um, yeah, they're, they're no longer making these. And so you're going to have a hard time finding them. But I want Lenovo to make more of these guys um, because they did it right. And the ones, and how they did it right is that they didn't try to own the implementation they uh, pass they used google google's vr 180 camera and they just implemented what was necessary to to make it accessible to google's um vr 180 uh, application and and then it just really all it does is it just renders out videos of of um of just a video of two images in a single frame that are of just basically the the um images that the two fisheye lenses produce which is all these are and it's just they just didn't they knew it wasn't like groundbreaking technology um that it was really just an implementation, an, an easy implementation. And uh, they didn't even bother to make it cost a lot. And they didn't bother to create an application to try to stabilize the video or do any of that kind of crap. Or even create a proprietary video format. They did it right. They they disowned the they they disowned the technology in a sense that they didn't try to own um, the technology. They didn't try to make it so that um, people couldn't possibly use it without using it through them. And um, so they they provided it, but it didn't sell. And it didn't sell probably because the resolution was not high enough or because people just assumed cheaper meant cheaper. And it's actually a, the best deal that's the reason why I bought a second one is, is that um, you get two batteries. The batteries last a long time on a charge. And I mean, at least an hour and a half. 
and the um, micro SD cards. You put a 32 gigabyte micro SD card, uh, 11 or 12 minutes of VR 180 is about four gigs. So you could get about an hour's worth into one of those. It's eight times uh, 32 gigabytes, eight times four gigabytes. So eight times uh, that'd be 88 minutes. So almost almost an hour and a half. And um, so that, that is a lot of video that you can produce. And the thing that's great about these cameras is you don't have to direct them really. Um, all you need to do is, is put them on a tripod and just, it. but it's important that your video be closer to the observer because um, if it's far away, if it's say a yard away or two yards away, you're not going to get be able to see very much detail. Um, that's so the thing is, is that it has to be kind of personal or it has to be a little bit distant, but it can't be too distant. You can't do telephoto type stuff. You can't, if you see a bird on the ground and you aim the camera at the bird, unless you're like point blank with the bird, nobody's going to be able to tell it's a bird other than just the shape and how it moves. Um, it, it's really good at taking videos of statues, of big things, um, of things that are not very articulate in detail, um, unless it, it can get close up to it. And when it comes close to it, it has to be um, perce perceptively like a statue. Um, if you get too close, then people aren't able to focus in on the item. So this is about probably as far as you want to bring people to the item. The furthest that you should ever bring people is that far. Um, beyond that, I mean, beyond this even, is um, that's that's too far. So for people that are holding uh, talk shows, this is perfect. This is what you would use to do a, a VR. Uh, a VR 180 experience is great for talk shows. Um, it's great for, um, if, if you had a talk show, you would just put a tripod and it would just be you and the other guy and sitting, you know, kind of on the other end, each of you at 60 degree angles and at the, at the other 60 degree angle, it would be the camera. And so it'd be like the person that is watching is an, is a participant in the table discussion. If it's more than people, then they sit closer together, but it can't be too many people unless you have multiple VR 180 cameras um, around the table and you just jump between them. That's how you would handle that. But then you would start to wonder if I really need a VR 180 or if I can just handle it with a, a 2D or maybe I'll need to do some video editing work and combine the two, okay? So, but at the very least, for the general lay audience, this is enough. And the thing is, is the micro SD cards, you take them out and you throw them into uh, a reader and you hook them up to your PC and they just, um, they, uh, they're easy to dump. I mean, and 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 all they do is pr produce MP4 files. And how you get up on YouTube? How you get anything up on YouTube? You get into the YouTube program and you upload the MP4 file. You don't have to do anything more. And somehow Google just figures out that it's a it's immersive video, 3D video, and they put it up on the site in a way that you can see it within Oculus Go. How do you get the video over to an Oculus Go? You can put the video into a website if you've got web software or, or if you've got a website or if you've got a way of putting your content into a cloud, you know, like a Google Drive or something, then you can probably just download it through the Oculus browser into the headset and view it from there. And there are plenty of programs that will view um, VR fisheye content 
because that's it, uh, there's two kinds. There's equirectangular um, video content, which is um, requires some processing, and then there's the other, which is fisheye, which is usually just the straight resource. Most all of the cameras are at, well, all the cameras are fisheye lenses. It's just that um, for some they they do things processes like stitching to to permit um, to permit more detail or to to try to bring together the image where um, the two lenses um, differ. You know where there's some sort of uh, I guess interpolation or something. <laughs> my my computer expertise really don't add a whole lot to getting stuff off these cameras and throwing them up on YouTube. There's really not much there. Now, if you're talking about an Insta360 Evo like this guy right here, this thing's a pain in the ass. Um, it is... It produces proprietary video formats, um, and if they go, if the you record too long, it corrupts the video file. Is it? I I gave up on it early just because of that, and um, it requires that you use Windows software to access the camera, and then you have to deal with their poor attempts at creating an application that permits. That, that is to take that video from that proprietary format and um, and make it useful. And they add so many features to the program to make it seem like it's going to be valuable to you. But the reality of the whole thing is, is that they're, they are trying to own it too much. It would have been better for them to probably have taken the application than make it um, such that any camera, any VR180 camera could be using, could be used with it, and that this camera just produce straight MP4s, you know, and then, or straight, uh, or some raw VR180 format, and then take that in, and, and then look at their application as a way of being the studio software for all VR180 cameras. And then that would improve the that would improve the entire market, and then people would look at them as being an alternative to Adobe Premiere. But no, they think that somehow they're going to own this marketplace, and they they tie it directly to the camera. And I will not probably even give this to anybody. I probably won't use it ever again. It'll probably sit around and collect dust, and I'll just use an example of just how not to do a device. And be, mainly because I'm a Linux user and because I support programs like Blender 3D, I don't believe in using technologies that are proprietary. And I will, um, I will encourage people not to ever buy such technologies. So this guy, unless I can get this guy named Mark Horvath, who um, makes invisible people. Um, I can get him um, to use that then if, if he can't, if his people want to, I will donate it to him, but I'm probably not going to sell it off. Mainly because they're probably not going to make as much money back from it. I really don't want to give someone else the, the terror and the and the hardship of having to deal with this shit. Okay. So. And it's really sad that this should not ever. That, that Lenovo had to let go of that. And that this thing is making money. I It, I, it makes no sense to me. And um, why people would even invest in shit like this. It's just because this is high resolution. And any artist is willing to go through hell to get something out of it. And, and um, you know, when they could use something like this, which is not quite as high a resolution, but is more forgiving. You know, 